Hello and welcome to another Hardcore Nuzlocke. Today we are attempting a run of Pokemon Leaf Green using only ground types. I know, it seems weird, right? Leaf Green instead of Fire Red? What gives? Well, to be perfectly honest, the only reason we're playing Leaf Green is because on Route 4, instead of an Ekans, there's a chance encounter for Sandshrew. Fun little fact about Sandshrew is it was actually the very first shiny I found outside of the Red Gyarados from Pokemon Gold and Silver. That is the only reason we are doing this run. Typically, a lot of people like to use Fire Red. I hear it's great for making ROM hacks. I don't know. We're just playing Leaf Green because I want an extra ground encounter. Three of the encounters we have are Rock Ground type, and I used those encounters in our Rock Run, so I'd rather use some ground types that we haven't used previously. My mom absolutely cracks me up. All boys leave home someday. It said so on TV. Oh yes, Professor Oak was looking for you. Just because it's on TV doesn't mean it's real, Mom. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's real, Mom. My childhood could have been so amazing had I just stayed at home instead of going off to a Pokemon adventure. And by the way, she lied to me because we know Professor Oak is not actually in his lab. He's hiding in the shadows until we try to go into the tall grass. Now you guys know as well as I know that none of these starters are ground type. As a matter of fact, the first ground type that we can encounter isn't until after Brock. So we leave the Bulbasaur in the Squirtle alone, and I did decide to change the Charmander encounter to the Nidoran Male. Nidoran Male is harder to find in Leaf Green because it's a 1% encounter on Route 3. You can find Nidorino in the Safari Zone relatively easy, and I also know that yes, Nidoran Male is not a ground type. To beat this first gym, we're not going to have a ground type. We're going to take a Pokemon that can be a ground type eventually. Just bear with me. Well, let's take a look at our starter here. Compost the Nidoran has a Calm plus Special Defense and minus Attack Nature. That's not great, but I think I'm going to roll a Special Attacking Nido King later on anyway. Has the Poison Appoint ability. You know, this thing's a fairly weak Poison type, so let's get through the early part of this game. For those of you that have been around for a while, you were probably expecting the Algo joke right now. After the Algo joke, I typically start a little conversation about something, and today we are switching it up. What I want to talk about is not work or real life, rather the changes that have been made across the different platforms in which I have a presence. Here on YouTube, my Discord, Twitter, things like that, I have gone through and spent a few hours really polishing everything up, you guys may or may not have noticed. If you haven't noticed, take a snoop around the channel. You will quickly realize that things have changed. Join the Discord if you guys want to continue conversations. It's a relatively quiet place, but we do have conversations from time to time. I also have a Twitter that I don't typically do much with. I do post the, the runs and stuff, so if you want to follow me over there. Again, all of these things I had before when I was doing the Minecraft stuff, we're just gearing it all towards the Nuzlocke's now. And it took a minute. The big thing that I want to talk about is Patreon. We have one of those. Of course, it is not required, but I'm going to plug it nonetheless. If you guys are feeling that you want to support this channel in a different way than just watching the videos, there is an option. Of course, not mandatory. None of it's mandatory. The only thing that I require of you is please watch my video. <laughs> There's no special perks or anything like that. It's merely just a tipping thing I'm getting with the rest of the American people and going tip happy. Just like in every run before this one, we of course nickname our rival Algorithm because we're trying to beat the Algorithm both in-game and in real life. I'm going to beat the Algorithm solo here in-game eventually, hopefully on our first attempt, but beating the Algorithm in real life is not very easy to do by myself. As a matter of fact, I need help from people like you watching the video now. Watching the video is one of the ways that you can help me beat the algorithm. Of course, you can like the video, you can share it with your friends, you can hit the notification bell, and if you keep coming back every week, you can of course check to see if you're subscribed to the channel. All of those things help me beat the algorithm in real life. Disliking a video and leaving a nasty comment saying, hey, your face is stupid and so is your Nuzlocke is also a way that can help me beat the algorithm and I'm not opposed to the negativity. I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. 
as I said before, poking the bear, you will get poked back. And making videos every week with you guys enjoying them makes making them so much easier. If you make a video that people don't watch or people don't enjoy, it's so hard to come back to this every week. So thank you guys for the continued support, the continued love. All jokes aside, this has been truly, truly amazing. I can't do it without you guys, so I don't, I can't thank you enough. You know, starting your sentence with a rock hard, <laughs> it's not a good way to try to get me in a serious gym trainer battle moment. Nonetheless, if I had a ground type Pokemon with ground type moves, I would easily beat Brock's rock types up and down the gym, but I don't have that. What I have is a poison rabbit guinea pig thing with double kick. That goes for focus energy turned one to up our critical hit chance, and Geodude goes for defense curl. That's not great. I would rather it not up its defense. I then go for double kick that does a decent amount of damage, not quite a third, and Geodude goes for tackle that activates our poison point ability, poisoning it. Awesome, that's gonna help us throughout this battle. It's a good thing we're not playing the original red and blue games because Brock has five full heals per Pokemon. We get a critical hit double kick on the first kick and take it out with the second part of double kick. Is that why they call it double kick? Because it always hits twice. If it only hits once, is it just kick? Onyx comes out and does outspeed us because it's a fast rock snake thing, but it just goes for bind that doesn't do a lot of damage. Double kick gets a critical hit the first one and then takes it to about half on the second one. We get a little sap damage from bind and onyx goes for bind again, which does a decent amount of damage because it gets a critical hit. Double kick doesn't crit this time, taking it down to low yellow health. Onyx just opts to go for Tackle, and after the Bind damage, we're sitting at 14 HP as another Double Kick takes out the Onyx, winning us the first Gym Battle. Not only do we get our first Gym Badge, but we also get the first evolution on the team with Compost evolving into a Nidorino. Nidorino is not a Ground-type Pokemon, but a few skips to the east gets us to Mount Moon. We can get a couple of Moonstones in there to evolve this thing into a Ground-type, as well as running into a Geodude, which is going to be our first ground type encounter. There are a couple of things that we need to do before heading to Mount Moon. First is here on Route 3 we have another chance encounter with a female Nidoran. In Fire Red this is where you find the male Nidoran and the female is a 1% encounter. Of course that is reversed here in Leaf Green and then Nidorina and Nidorino can be found in the Safari Zone respectively. After a couple of Pokeballs, we do catch this Pokemon, and again, this guinea pig thing is not a ground type, but eventually it will evolve, and we get two Moonstones very, very soon. I am going to nickname this thing. I'm going to nickname it Fertilizer. There is a name theme, as is with every single run. These first two Pokemon don't really give off the name theme that well, but you guys are smart. I know you will get it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the female Nidoran here. And it has an adamant plus attack minus special attack nature. You know what? That's freaking great. Nidoran, both of them, can learn very, very similar moves. So I'll make this one a physical attacker and the male version a special attacker. It's got the poison point ability and some decent stats. I'll take it. Just before heading into Mount Moon, you want to make sure you come to this little squiggle right here and pick up the Person Berry. It's very important that we get this potentially for the Misty Battle. In Mount Moon, we have our first real ground type encounter in Geodude. Geodude is one of the three rock ground types that we can capture in this game. And as a matter of fact, I have used Geodude, Onyx, and Rhyhorn in the rock run I did of Fire Red a while back. I also used both of the Nidorans in the poison type run that we did of Fire Red, so I've used a lot of the encounters that we have available to us. But Diglett and Cubone and Sandshrew I have never really used. So we're going to build a team around all of that, and predominantly I want to use the ground type Pokemon, not necessarily the rock ground type Pokemon, but Geodude is an amazing Pokemon nonetheless. I am going to nickname this thing Silt. Can you guys guess the name theme? It should get easier as we get more encounters. Let's take a look at Silt here. And Silt has an Impish 
plus defense, minus special attack nature. That's fine. I'll take it. It has the sturdy ability, which doesn't work properly in Generation 3, but it is our very first official encounter. Now, we are going to have quite a few evolutions whilst we're here in Mount Moon. The first thing that we do is get fertilizer to level 16 so it will evolve into its bulkier form, Nidorina. Still not a ground-type Pokemon, but that is okay. Because not too far into Mount Moon, we actually get our hands on our first Moonstone so we can evolve Compost into a beastly Nido King. This thing is a monster of a Pokemon. A little deeper into Mount Moon and we get our hands on a second Moonstone and we can evolve Fertilizer into her more beastly form, Nido Queen. Between the King and the Queen, we have some amazing bulk added to the team in a very very quick short succession now leaving mount moon this is where my heart sinks and my nerves start to grow because we have a very big battle coming up with misty and her water types more or less it's just her starmie now these two brothers right here will teach moves to our pokemon mega punch and mega kick if we take a look at mega punch here it's a base 80 power move with 85 accuracy not a great move, but strong for this early in the game. I'm not going to teach it to my Pokemon because I do or can get access to the Dig TM, which is base 60 power with 100% accuracy and with Stab makes it a base 90 power move, outclassing Mega Punch. Mega Kick, however, is a much, much stronger move. It only has a base 75% accuracy, but it has a base 120 power. So I'm going to teach this to Fertilizer. This may be just one part of a 15-part plan to beat Misty and her Stormy. On Route 4, we have a chance encounter to get ourselves a Sandshrew. Now, the two brothers that I just talked to to learn Mega Punch and Mega Kick from, the reason we did that before we caught the Sandshrew is because we can't get back to that area until after we learn Cut, and we can't learn Cut until after we beat Misty. We can actually go pretty far in this game, we can do the SSN and all of that stuff before beating Misty, but Misty is the next roadblock, and it scares the crap out of me. It's why I'm waffling on and we're wasting a little bit of time. Nonetheless, we did catch Sandshrew here, and we're going to give this thing a nickname. It's a very clever nickname. <laughs> Sand. Can you guys guess the name theme? There is a name theme, I promise you. Let's take a look at it. It has a serious neutral nature. I will absolutely and 100% take that. Has the sand veil ability and some decent stats. I do have a plan to beat Misty. It's going to take a lot of steps and the first step was getting the person berry. The next step was teaching mega kick and now we need to battle this rival. It shouldn't be difficult. I lead Silt against his Pidgeotto. We do get tagged with a Sand Attack, which can be very annoying, but we break through the accuracy loss and land a very strong Rock Throw down to low red health. I decide to swap Silt out, and we swap into Compost. We do get hit with a Priority Quick Attack on the swap-in, which is fine. I decide to go for Focus Energy to up our critical hit chance, and I get hit with a Sand Attack. Again, very, very annoying. Pidgeotto out-prioritizes us with a quick attack. It does activate our poison point ability, but that doesn't matter because a double kick does take out the Pidgeotto. This brings out Squirtle, and this is why I wanted the critical hit chance, just in case. I go for double kick, turn one, and we do a significant amount of damage. About a third. Squirtle just goes for Tail Whip. This battle with our rival isn't that scary because we do get a critical hit the next turn. But also, his Squirtle, War Turtle, and Blastoise is only going to learn level up moves, so it's going to have Water Gun up until the Elite Four battle. Not very scary. We managed to take this thing out with another Double Kick, and this brings out his Abra, which can't do anything to us, so I swap back out into Silt. There's a couple of failed Teleports, and we take this thing out with a single Rock Throw. This just leaves his Ratata, who goes for Tail Whip, and we hit it with a rock throw that doesn't quite KO it. It goes for quick attack, doing a little bit of damage to us. And a tackle takes out the rat. What I need to do is I need to move this cop away from this house here so we can get to the backyard and get the TM for dig. 
To do so requires us battling all of the trainers on Route 24 and 25, and then coming to this house to talk to this guy, who says his name is Bill, he's in a Clefairy, and if you told me a guy was stuck in a Pokemon, I, I, yeah, we're just going to click the button and hope everything works out. I wonder where the Clefairy goes, because Bill pops out of this side, is the Clefairy stuck in the other side? Nonetheless, we go over and talk to him and he gives us the SSN ticket, and that is the key to getting the cop moved from in front of that house. As I said, the cop moves, and now we can make our way through this busted up house that a Team Rocket broke into, use Dig to get out of the back, and we can battle him to get our hands on the TM for Dig, which gives us a very nice stab option, and... I never go back, but if you go back and talk to the owner of the house, he tells you you can keep the TM. This does open up Route 5 for us, and on this route, in this grass, we can actually catch ourselves a Meowth. Meowth is a pretty decent HM Pokemon. It can learn Cut, it can learn Flash, and if you evolve it into a Persian, it can learn Strength. What is also great about Meowth is it has the pickup ability, and it can pick up the TM for Hidden Power. Hidden Power is another option that we could use to battle Misty. Unfortunately, I did take a look at our Pokemon, and Pokemon like Compost has a base 36 fighting Hidden Power. On Route 6 here, we can come north to the Gate of Saffron, and to the left of it, there is a Citrus Berry. I believe this is the only one you can find in Fire Red. That's going to be very, very helpful against Misty. You can also get a Rare Candy, and because of our Pokemon not being at the level cap just yet, we can head south to Vermilion, and then we can head over to Diglett's Cave, where we can get our next encounter. You guessed it, a Diglett. You know, to be fair, we could have gotten a Doug Trio as well, but more than likely you're going to get a Diglett. A level 29 Doug Trio would have been a little too much. A level 15 Diglett, much better encounter. Diglett is not the answer to beating Misty. Getting the Citrus Berry just allows us to evolve our strategy a little bit more. This just gives us another encounter in case things go south really, really fast. I am going to nickname this Pokemon Loam. Can you guys guess the nickname theme? With all of these Pokemon, you should be able to guess it now. Loam has a bold plus defense and minus attack nature. Ugh, that minus attack not great oh hell yes yep we were grinding evs here on route four and we found a shiny sand true i'm i'm sorry sand you're gonna get replaced by well the the more sickly looking sand true but we did it sand slash is one of my favorite shinies radicate is also a favorite shiny of mine i i just love the designs the color scheme i should say come on please catch this thing Yes! Hell, hell to the yes, we caught it. It does feel bad that we've been training all these Pokemon up and I'm just going to dump this one in the box forever, but hey, uh, it's a shiny. This is going to make a great clickbait thumbnail, which isn't technically clickbait because we have the shiny. I was thinking about naming this thing Sand 2.0, but mm, nah, we're just going to leave it Sand. If we take a look at Sand here, leaving the space at the end of its name is going to be weird. I need to fix that, but it has a Jolly, plus speed, minus special attack nature. Still has the Sand Veil ability. This one doesn't look like it has as great of stats, but it's a shiny. Come on. There's a couple of options with Misty. I could equip the Person Berry to help cure off any confusion we may get from Water Pulse, or equip the Citrus Berry to allow us to survive a Water Pulse. The Star U, I'm not scared of. It is a range to take this thing out with double kick, but fertilizer has been edged almost to level 22 to start the battle. Do we get the favorable range? We do. Beautiful. We take out the star you, no problem. What I didn't factor into this is when we level up to level 22, we learn the move body slam. Body slam is base 85 power with 100% accuracy. I'd rather use that over mega kick. I hate using less than accurate moves. I don't know that we outspeed the Starmie. I don't know if we do enough damage. I did do calculations and it says we don't outspeed, but we do survive a critical hit. So we can survive two hits. We outspeed, that's amazing. We do almost half damage and we paralyze. That's 
Wow. Okay, Water Pulse hits. And it crits. We survive. 3 HP. I guess I should have equipped the Person Berry because we're not going to be able to survive another Water Pulse at 33 HP. But a Body Slam is enough to win us a Deathless Misty battle. That is absolutely phenomenal. Wow. After that, we can head to the SSN, known for its extravagant parties, fine dining. And of course, we have the Rival 3 battle with Algo here on the SSN. His team is pretty decent, but as time progresses and the game progresses, we are going to get moves to deal with his team very, very soon. His lead Pidgeotto is not something I'm worried about. We lead Silt. We do get hit with a Sand Attack on the first turn, which is annoying, but no matter, we break through and connect with a Rock Throw that does KO the bird. This brings out War Turtle. I immediately swap into Fertilizer, who gets hit with a Water Gun on the swap. We tank it very, very well. We hit it with a Body Slam that does well over half of its health. War Turtle just goes for Withdrawal, so another Body Slam takes it out. This brings out Kadabra. Kadabra is very, very dangerous with Confusion. I swap back into Silt, who gets hit with a Kinesis on the swap in. We get hit with another Kinesis, so we're at minus two accuracy, which is very annoying because we miss our next magnitude. Kadabra goes for Disable and it misses. I then connect with a magnitude that is only a magnitude four, so it does pitiful damage. Kadabra then hits us with a Disable, disabling our magnitude, but I was already swapping to Tackle because I know how this game goes. We get hit with a Confusion the next turn that takes us all the way to 20 HP. That is scary. Tackle doesn't quite take out the Kadabra, so I am forced to swap out, and I swap into Sand. We get hit with a Confusion on the swap in, and it does a significant amount of damage, but my plus speed nature, I stay in and get out sped. Kadabra misses Kinesis, luckily, and Sand uses Brick Break to take out the Kadabra. This just leaves Raticate, who of course falls to a single Brick Break, but I almost lost Sand there. Just before the Lieutenant Surge battle, we do have an evolution here with Sand evolving into Sand Slash. The color scheme isn't that great here in Gen 3, but this is one of my favorite shinies nonetheless. I still love it in this game. Look at it. Beautiful. It should come as no shock that Lieutenant Surge can't do anything against our ground type Pokemon. And yes, that pun was intended. These are the jokes. We taught Sand the Dig TM, and we do outspeed the Voltorb, and we can take it out with a single tackle. Pikachu is out next, and I go for Dig outspeeding it, but whilst we're underground, it goes for double team. That plus one to invasion actually results in us missing our dig. It sets up another double team, and I don't want to mess around with the two-turn dig, so I go for Slash, and we miss. This allows Pikachu to set up one more double team. However, it's not enough because we finally break through to connect with a Slash that surprisingly one-shots the Pikachu. This just leaves his Raichu. As it comes out, we do outspeed it and go for dig, it sets up double team whilst we're underground, but unlike it, the Pikachu before it, Sand is not having any more of the evasiveness, and we connect with a dig, one-shotting it, winning us a very easy third gym battle. Immediately following the win against Lieutenant Surge, we do have another evolution on the team with Loam evolving into a Doug Trio. What is amazing about this Pokemon is it is super, super fast. That minus attack, though, sucks. I made it almost all the way through Rock Tunnel before I finally ran into the Rock Snake Pokemon Onyx. Now Onyx is fast, but it really doesn't do much outside of that. And to be fair, we have a couple other Rock Ground type Pokemon, Rhyhorn and Geodude, that are much, much better than Onyx. So if nothing else, it's most likely just going to sit in the box. We're going to put it on the team to round out the team for now, if we can catch this thing. I do decide to swap into Fertilizer because of our half half health and our lowered defense and we try to catch this thing with a pokeball it breaks free we go for a second one doesn't work we go for a third one doesn't work and finally the fourth pokeball we throw at it we catch it that was a bit annoying for a pokemon that is most likely going to spend most of its time in a box nonetheless 
We do catch it and we do need to name this thing. I decided to nickname it Chalk. Again, can you guys guess the name theme? If we take a look at our Chalk here, it's holding a hard stone. That's awesome. And it has an adamant plus attack minus special attack nature. That's okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong about this thing, but holding the hard stone, that is amazing. That's like a 5% chance. Just before getting to Celadon, we have an evolution. Silt evolves into a Graveler. This is much needed bulk for Silt. It's been doing pretty good fighting all of these trainers, but it's going to do even better as a beastly Graveler. Getting to Celadon, the game really, really opens up. There's many, many things we can do, like the Rocket Hideout. We can go battle the gym. We can go get the HM for Fly. We can get the T and go to Saffron. But the most important thing is coming here to the department store. We can sell off some of our items. More importantly, we can talk to this guy and we can actually buy the TM for Dig. We can also get Brick Break here so we have some stab options and some really good moves that we can buy. Selling off our items, we can then get the coin case and get some coins and get even better moves like Ice Beam and Thunderbolt for some of our other Pokemon. I'm not as worried about the grass type gym leader as I was Misty the water type because we have compost and fertilizer that take neutral damage from ground type moves because of our secondary poison type. I also went and did the rocket hideout and got enough cash together to buy coins to get the TM for ice beam and compost here is a heck of a special attacker easily one-shotting the victory bell with a single ice beam. Out next is Tangella. Tangella doesn't stand a chance against our superpowered Ice Beam either going down in a single shot. This just leaves Erica's Victory Bell. We do outspeed it and hit it with an Ice Beam. Unfortunately, we don't quite take it out, leaving it at a sliver of health, and it just goes for Stun Spore. That's fine. I was prepared for this with a held Cherry Berry. You can get one just outside of Rock Tunnel. Erica then goes for a Hyper Potion, and I decide to go for Peck, doing just a little bit of chip damage. This ensures that we can take out the Vile Plume with one more Ice Beam. Very easy win. In the Pokemon Tower, we have another rival battle with Algo. This is the Rival 4 battle. At this point in the game, we have moves like Water Pole, Shock Wave, and Ice Beam. With that type of type coverage, we can take out most Pokemon. As a matter of fact, a single Ice Beam takes out the Pidgeotto in a single shot. Execute comes out next, and we one-shot it with a single Ice Beam very, very nicely. Kadabra comes out. This thing has a high special defense, but surprisingly, we still take it out with an Ice Beam. We are 11 levels higher than it. Later on, that is going to be a very difficult thing to fight. War Turtle comes out next, a single shockwave doesn't quite take it out, it leaves it at a sliver of health, but it just goes for withdrawal and our rival doesn't use potions at this point so we can take it out with another shockwave. This just leaves his last Pokemon Growlithe that hits us with Intimidate, but that doesn't matter, Water Pulse is enough to take it out. That was a very easy win. Inside the Pokemon Tower we have another chance encounter to get ourselves a Cubone. I've never really used this Pokemon, so I'm kind of excited and hope that I can get it. I did buy some Great Balls for a better chance to catch this thing, so we don't have the same things happen that we had with Chalk there. And one single Great Ball is enough to catch it. That's beautiful. We're going to nickname this thing, of course, and we nickname it Clay. That's a great nickname for this Pokemon. Unfortunately... It's transferred to the PC, so we'll have to check it out in a moment. All right, let's take a look at Clay here, the Cubone. It has a hardy neutral nature. I will take it. It has the lightning rod ability. Mm, this thing does get Rockhead, I believe, and I would rather that ability, but nonetheless, I will take this Pokemon. While I'm in the Pokemon Center, I decide to go ahead and trade the Graveler so we can evolve this thing into a beastly, beastly Golem. I know how beastly this Pokemon is. I've used it many times before, and I'm very happy to use it again. Whilst heading to Fuchsia on Cycling Road, battling some trainers, we have an evolution, Clay evolving into a Marowak. This is probably the last evolution we're going to see. I do have another encounter with Rhyhorn, but again, it's probably just going to be an alternate sitting in the box. 
In the Safari Zone is where our last encounter is, the Rhyhorn. Each one of these Pokemon do have a chance to run away, so I don't know if we'll actually catch it. It is nice to have a couple of alternates, but if we don't catch this thing, it's really not a loss. I just would rather have a couple of alternates just in case. Now, as far as the name theme goes, have you guys guessed it yet? The name theme is pretty simple. It's different soil types. Silt, clay, sand, loam, stuff like that. Chalk. As a matter of fact, Rhyhorn's nickname is going to be Peat because it is another soil type, and that is the name theme. If you guys guessed it, well, congratulations, you get it. A gold star. Taking a look at Pete here, it has a relaxed plus defense and minus speed nature. It has the lightning rod ability and, you know, Rhyhorn was a key component to me beating my rock run of Fire Red. Unfortunately, both it and Onyx are just going to sit in the box for alternates for now. Koga kind of marks the start of the boss rush in the game. His level cap is the same as Sabrina at level 43, and we also have the Sylph Company to go through. I've kind of gone through a portion of it. His poison types really don't stand a chance against compost or fertilizer. They also have a very weak special defense, so his first coughing goes down to a single ice beam. His muck is much more bulky on the special side, so I could swap a physical attacker in, but I decided to go for Surf to see how much it does, and it does about a third. It goes for Minimize as we thought it would, as we anticipated it would. I go for Surf taking this thing low in yellow health, and we get hit with a Sludge that does not do much to us at all. The Evasion never mattered because we take out the Muck with one more Surf. Out comes his last Coughing. These things can go Boom, which is a bit scary, but they don't have very good special defense, so we can take this thing out with a single Surf. That just leaves his Weezing. It too can go boom. Luckily for us, Surf takes this thing down to about half health and it was going for Tackle, so we can take it out with one more Surf. The fact that Compost has a very versatile moveset and can hit decent on the special is making this thing a staple on the team. The Rival 5 battle here in Sylph Company is no different. The Pidgeot he leads with goes down to a single Ice Beam. Execute comes out next and it too falls to a single Ice Beam bringing out the Alakazam. Alakazam is a bit scary. I stay in nonetheless and do a decent amount of damage with Surf, well over half of its health, and it just sets up a Reflect, so we go unpunished and can take it out with another Surf. This brings out his fully evolved starter, Blastoise, and this is very scary. It goes for Protect turn 1, which is a bit annoying, and turn 2, unfortunately, Shockwave doesn't do half. I really need to go through Sylph and get the items to sell so that we can get Thunderbolt. Water Gun then does a decent amount of damage to us down to 88 HP. It goes for Protect again, so we miss our attack. It whiffs a Protect at the very next turn, so we can tag it with a Surf. I'm just trying to do a little bit of chip damage here. Luckily for us, it doesn't go for Protect again, so we can finally take this thing out with one more Shockwave. This thing is going to be very scary the next couple of battles. This just leaves his Growlithe who comes out and tags us with the Intimidate, which doesn't matter because that Surf takes it out in one single hit. Next up for the boss rush is Leader Sabrina and her Psychic type Pokemon. Compost and Fertilizer, of course, are taking a back seat. Loam is going to do this one. Loam is very, very fast, and we taught it the very strong move Return. Return is enough to take out the lead Kadabra. Mr. Mime comes out and we tag it with a return, but unfortunately it's not quite enough to take it out and we have to tank a Psybeam, which we do pretty decently on 56 HP remaining. Sabrina then goes for a Hyper Potion, so I hit Mr. Mime with a Slash that does well over half of its health, so we take it out with a follow-up Slash. Venomoth comes out and I decide to hit it with a return. Ground moves are not super effective, Bug Poison, Ground is neutral. Venomoth whiffs a Supersonic, so we can take it out with one more return. Alakazam is a very scary Pokemon and is very fast. It's not surprising, however, that Loam outspeeds it and does a very, very decent amount of damage with return. Alakazam just sets up a future sight. Sabrina then goes for a Hyper Potion fully healing this thing up. I anticipated that, so I go for Slash. 
does a decent amount of damage, and then Return can take out the Alakazam, winning us the sixth gym battle. Did you guys know that in Blaine's gym, if you answer these questions correctly, it opens up the gate, and then you can actually answer these questions again, and if you answer it wrong, you get challenged by the trainer. Now you know. Any one of my ground types would have a field day with the fire type gym leader Blaine. Unfortunately, the Growlithe and Arcanines intimidates render our ground type moves useless, unless we do a bunch of switching. Unfortunately for Blaine, we do get access to the strongest water move in existence and compost can use it, so the two intimidates do not matter. A single surf is enough to drown the poor little puppy. Out comes the fire pony, Ponita, and it too falls to a single surf. Rapidash, the more deadly fire pony, goes down to a single surf as well. This just leaves the pseudo-legendary puppy, Arcanine. Unfortunately for Arcanine, Compost doesn't care about its bulk and takes it out with a single critical hit, super effective serve. Sorry Blaine, that was way too easy. Up against our ground type nemesis Giovanni, we could easily take out all of his Pokemon with Compost and Surf, but I decide to lead with Clay because it hasn't seen a lot of screen time since we got it. Bone Meringue is enough to take out his Rhyhorn in one single attack. We're not going to bait out any certain Pokemon, they're just going to come out in normal order, so Dugtrio is up next. It's very fast and it does outspeed us, but it doesn't hit very hard even with that Earthquake only doing 27 HP of damage. Bone Meringue then crits, taking out the Dugtrio. Out next is Nido Queen. It is Poison type, so it does take neutral damage from Bone Meringue, but again, Clay showing off its physical prowess, taking out the Nido Queen in one single attack. Nido King comes out next, and it too falls to a single Bone Meringue attack. Clay cannot be stopped. This just leaves Giovanni's slightly more bulky Rhyhorn. It's a very slow Pokemon and takes super effective damage from Bone Meringue, so of course it goes down in a single hit. The last battle before the Elite Four is a rival battle here on Route 22 with Algo and I lead Compost, who I have finally taught the move Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is enough to take out his big-ass pigeon for the last time before the Elite Four. This does bait out the Alakazam, which is very scary, so I swap into Sand. Alakazam was going for Disable and it misses, but we do get outsped and hit with a nasty Psychic, and had that crit, we would have lost Sand. No matter, we go unpunished and a stab... Earthquake is enough to take out the Alakazam. Blastoise then comes out, so I swap into Compost. Blastoise is just setting up the rain as we swap in, which is fine. It's a bit scary, but it's fine. Thunderbolt does enough to take Blastoise down to just below half health, and then we get hit with that rain-boosted water gun that does more damage than I thought it would to 62 HP. Again, if that had crit, it would have taken us out. No matter unpunished, and we can take out the Blastoise with one more Thunderbolt. Out next is his Growlithe. We have a Rain Boosted Surf. We do not need the Rain to take out his Growlithe. It's just funny that we're using his own move against him to take out his Growlithe. And we take out the Rhyhorn that comes out next. It's kind of poetic. This just leaves his Execute as the Rain stops, and we can swap into Fertilizer. Fertilizer avoids a Stun Spore on the swap-in, and we can hit a pretty nasty Shadow Ball against the Execute, not enough to one-shot it, which is unfortunate. We then do get hit with that aforementioned Stun Spore, which is a bit annoying. Execute's just going for Solar Beam. We break through the Paralysis to take it out with a Shadow Ball, and off to the Elite Four we go. Alright, here is the team leveled up to level 60 to meet Lance's Dragonite. We have Clay the Marowak with Bone Meringue, Brick Break, Bone Club, and Headbutt. Compost the Nido King with Ice Beam, Surf, Thunderbolt, and Sunny Day. Loam the Dug Trio with Earthquake, Toxic, Return, and Double Team. We have Sand the Shiny, Sand Slash with Brick Break, Earthquake, Aerial Ace, and Slash. Fertilizer, the Nido Queen with Body Slam, Dig, Shadow Ball, and Brick Break. Rounding out the team is Silt, 
the Golem with Earthquake, Defense Curl, Rock Slide, and Rollout. Here is the team of six. I think we can take on the Elite Four. There is no time like the present. Let's get to it. Besides the champion battle, Lorelei is the only other major threat here in the Elite Four. I know that I can't beat her Deathless. I know I can't get through the entirety of this, so I had to plan accordingly. I lead with Clay against the Dugong, and Clay knows what it's in for. But it does not care because it crits a Brick Break, KOing the Dugong in one shot. Very nice showing to start the battle, Clay. Cloyster is very bulky defensively, but I hit it with a Brick Break nonetheless, and we do well over half of its health. It sets up Hail, which I knew it would, so we can take it out with one more Brick Break. Very nice. Slowbro comes out next. I hit this thing with a Bone Meringue that takes it down to half health, and it surprises the absolute crap out of me by going for Surf which takes us down to 12 HP. After the hail damage, we are sitting at 3 HP. We can take out the slow bro with one more bone meringue, but that is the end for our boy Clay here. As the Jinx comes out next, the hail chip damage does take out Clay. I knew a sacrifice had to be made, and Clay knew the sacrifice it was making. Sand could come out and outspeed the Jinx with an Earthquake and easily one-shot it. This just leaves Lapras, which is a very, very scary Pokemon. I go for Earthquake turn 1, and it does over half of its health. And we get hit with an Ice Beam? That we tank rather well. Critical hit would have KO'd us. The Citrus Berry activates, and this does make me a little scared. I don't know if we can take this thing out with one more Earthquake, but we gotta risk it for all the Biscuits. And luckily for us, we squeak out a KO with Earthquake. Clay's sacrifice will not be in vain. He allowed the team to continue forth without losing too many of these Pokemon. I know that the champion battle is going to be very difficult. Our next opponent, Bruno, in his fighting types, is not going to be difficult. As a matter of fact, a single stab, super effective Earthquake from Sand knocks out the first Onyx. The second Onyx comes out, and it too falls to a single stab, super effective Earthquake. It crit, but that crit did not matter. Hitmonchan comes out next. I decide to go for Aerial Ace because I thought it could do some serious damage, and it does, leaving Hitmonchan on a sliver of health. We then get hit with a Sky Uppercut that does a decent amount of damage. Earthquake is going to do more because it's Stab. Bruno goes for a full restore, and uh, as I said before, that single Earthquake is enough to take out the Hitmonchan. Hitmonlee comes out. We're just going to go for Earthquake. We're pressing A till we win. Hitmonlee goes down to a single stab Earthquake, and that just leaves Machamp, who we click A on Earthquake, and it falls to a single Earthquake that crit. Up next is Agatha and her poison type Pokemon. Early on, we had done a bunch of speed EV training with Fertilizer, so I'm hoping we can outspeed her Pokemon, and I taught it the Shadow Ball TM. As a matter of fact, we do outspeed her first Gengar, and we can one-shot it with a single Shadow Ball. Beautiful. Haunter comes out. We, of course, are going to outspeed it and one-shot it with a single Shadow Ball. This brings out her Ace Gengar, because these Pokemon have Psychic-type moves. And surprisingly, we do outspeed it, and even more surprisingly, we actually one-shot it with Shadow Ball. That is a huge 3-for-3 three three with Fertilizer. Beautiful. Golbat comes out next, and we can do well over half of its health with a Body Slam, but unfortunately, we get hit with a Confuse Ray. The Confuse Ray is annoying because Fertilizer is very self-destructive and hurts herself in confusion. We also get hit with an Air Cutter that does a decent amount of damage, coupled with that self-destructive nature of Fertilizer. Fertilizer hurts herself again in confusion, and we get hit with another Air Cutter, down to 72 HP, so I decide to swap in Compost. We get hit with an Air Cutter on the swap in, and this actually puts us in perfect position. We can take out the Golbat with a Thunderbolt, and as the Arbok comes out, we can soak up the Intimidate. Perfect. I then decide to swap in Loam, who gets hit with a Screech on the swap-in, but Loam is very, very fast and does learn Earthquake via level up, so we can take out the Arbok with a single super effective Earthquake. 
Last for the Elite Four is Lance and his quote-unquote dragon types. We use that term loosely because Gyarados is not a dragon. As a matter of fact, we lead with Compost, soak up the Intimidate, and then we outspeed in one shot with that quad super effective Thunderbolt. We knew we would. Aerodactyl is out next. and Aerodactyl is a very, very fast Pokemon and hits us with a wing attack. What's beautiful is that activates our Poison Point ability. We then hit it with a Thunderbolt that unfortunately doesn't KO the Aerodactyl, leaving it on a sliver of red health. But the poison damage it takes from the Poison Point ability takes it out in Poetic Justice. This just leaves his three actual Dragon-type Pokemon starting with Dragonite. Dragonite is quad weak to Ice Beam, so it goes down in a single shot. His first Dragonair comes out, and luckily for us, is weak enough to go down from a single Ice Beam, which means as his second Dragonair comes out, it too will fall to a single Ice Beam, and that wins us the Elite Four. We just have the champion of the Kanto region. We have made it to the final rival battle with Algo, with five healthy Pokemon. Against his lead Pidgeot, I lead Silt. We get hit with a Sand Attack, turn one, which is very annoying, but we break through that and KO the Pidgeot with a single super effective stab, Rock Slide. Rhydon comes out next, and that was actually very surprising. I can hit it with an Earthquake that does a lot of damage, but not quite KOing it, and then we get tagged with a Scary Face. This gives Rhydon the speed advantage, but Algo goes for a full restore, fully healing it up, and we can take it right back down to red health with that Earthquake, and we did more damage this time, but not quite a KO. We get outsped then and hit with an Earthquake, and it does a lot of damage down to 58 HP. We miss our next Earthquake, so Rhydon can take us out with another Earthquake, and that is our second loss on the team. I then send out Compost to take out the Rhydon with a Surf, and this baits out the Alakazam. I knew it would, so I swap immediately into Loam. Alakazam goes for Reflect, which is a bit annoying because now our Earthquake doesn't do as much damage as it should. Still over half of its health. We then tank a Psychic very well on 35 HP, and another Earthquake takes out the Alakazam. This brings out the Blastoise. We can fire off an Earthquake, doing a little bit of chip damage, and then get hit with a Hydro Pump that takes out Loam. That is two teammates lost already. I knew this battle was going to be hard, but I didn't know how hard it was going to be. I send out Compost. I go for Thunderbolt. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite KO the Blastoise, leaving it on red health. Blastoise misses a Hydro Pump, which is huge, and the Citrus Berry that heals Blastoise is even bigger because it pulls it out of healing range, which means Compost can KO it with one more Thunderbolt. Wow. Out next is Executor. We do a decent amount of damage with Ice Beam on turn one, but unfortunately, Executor hits us with that Sleep Powder. I was not prepared for Sleep Powder. Yeah, that kind of screwed up my whole plan. I swap in Sand as Algo goes for a full restore, and then I misclick on Earthquake instead of going for Aerial Ace. We then get hit with a Giga Drain that does significant damage all the way down to 29 HP and fully heals up the Executor. Aerial Ace then takes this thing below half health, and one more Giga Drain takes out Sand. We are now down four of our six Pokemon. I bring out Fertilizer, who can take out the Executor with a Shadow Ball. We have a Sleeping Compost in the back just in case, but his last Pokemon is Arcanide. The Intimidate drop is a bit scary because I don't know if a Stab Super Effective Dig will take this thing out. We burrow underground, we come back up, and it is enough to one-shot the Arcanine, winning us the Elite Four, winning us the run. Losing four Pokemon in the Elite Four is never fun. But the fact of the matter is, we won. Clay was an intentional sacrifice. Silt and Loam were also intentional sacrifices. Sand was the only Pokemon that we lost that was just bad playing on my part. 
We could have done the rival battle a little bit different. I could have just led with compost, but I wanted to change things up, and it cost me almost the run. Nonetheless, this was a great run and a great team. Surprisingly, Sandslash is pretty decent. It doesn't have a very good move pool by level up, but it can learn some good TMs. The rest of the Pokemon we know are very, very good, like Silt and Compost and Fertilizer. Clay and Loam, you know, they stood their own at varying points in the game. Nonetheless, I had a lot of fun playing this, and I always love coming back to Fire Red and Leaf Green. These are some of my favorite games. But as I've said before, these are some of the easiest games to Nuzlocke, so I knew I was going to win this run no matter what. I beat this game with a Beedrill and Hardcore Nuzlocke rules. That's just to drive my point home further. <laughs> Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had so much fun playing this run. And the next run I have planned, it, I know you guys are going to enjoy it. Everybody loved the last time we did this generation, so I'm looking forward to it. But we need to get this video edited, we need to get it uploaded, so that's enough of me waffling on. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know the routine. Leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. Hell, consider subscribing if you're returning to the channel. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.